We're much more sophisticated club crowd. It's ten years ago, we really weren't to know what's going on. We're much like sponges. We didn't know how it's going to go. And, and also, also, there's something about the people that are still around from that era. Unique individual characters. We bring out a severe lack of them, and that's quite sad actually, because we always we always have a plentiful supply of, of unique characters. Club characters, and they exist still. I mean, you know, what am I? I'm a club character. I think what happens in the club scene, in the same way that it happens in music and whatever, I think that it gives people an avenue to actually invent their, uh, invent their own persona. Um, it's an arena in which you can invent who you want to be um, in a way that you can in music and whatever. So I think that's why it's perfect for people like Lee Bowery or whatever, because it's, it's, it, you can actually decide who you want to be, how you want to look how you're going to behave and actually live that out. And I mean, that's true even for people like myself, whatever. You, 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 can, you can actually, in that environment, create, um, create your own persona, which, which, is, which I've always thought was a healthy thing. So I, I don't think any, any of us are ever what, um, what society really ideally would like this to be. Nightclubs have changed immensely since the early 80s. In the early 80s, clubs were mainly much more cliquey. There was more of a certain scene going on. I mean, you had clubs like Taboo, and you had clubs that's much smaller clubs. And they, they were basically run by a set of people, which everyone went to, like I.E. Lee Bowery and certain people. Um, and they were much more cliquey. People dressed up a lot more then. And it wasn't mainly about music, it was more about being seen. Now it's more about music than being seen. I mean, music has taken over. Creativity still thrives within the club scene, but will the ever-increasing commercialism lead to its death? In the old days, it used to be sort of warehouses and things like that, and the whole point of it was um, that, you know, it was the music stuff now. You need to, you know, we go to clubs in Barcelona and places like that where they have the sea coming in on the dance floor. I mean, it's become completely, com become... Com completely commercialised. Uh, yeah, I mean, clubs, you know. have clubs have had to make more effort now. And also, because there is much more of a club culture, the clubs have got better. Whereas before it used to be like your ritzy with your carpet. And that was the whole of the 80s. Now the 90s have seen, like, you know, the clubs are being more designed around the music. So there's more accessibility to, to water and bars and toilets and all the sort of thing that has come about by the fact that there are that many people going there. Well, it's progressed to such a commercial level and an international level, which is wonderful. Um, um, there's a lot more money to be made from it. It's, um, it's become a multi-million pound industry. Um, if you look at the profits that Cream turn over and Ministry of Sound, it's phenomenal what they turn over. They're just corporate, you know, yeah, sort of like Ministry of Sound. Well, they're like, like the modern Ritzies. They are the new Ritzies, you know. That's for people who don't know where to go to. Okay. It's not totally about make, making money. To some, well, to, it is to some people, yes, but those people are very apparent um, who it has become about making money. Um, but a, a, anything that goes on, if it, if it becomes so popular and commercial, why, why should you step aside, aside to it, you know, uh, uh, step aside from it when you've helped create something and, and enjoy it and love it so much? Yeah. It's money orientated, it's not about organic talent, it's about getting the people through the door. Because they have to, because look at their overheads, look at how much they spend on marketing, it's, it's forced for them. Whereas there are other, other smaller clubs that they need to force their audience, because they have what it takes, so... Super clubs like Cream and Ministry, I mean, you know, they're super clubs in our own minds, aren't they? I mean, they really are, it's like, you know, I've played at Ministry many a time, and to me it's not a super club. Uh, there's nothing super about it. I don't particularly like playing in big clubs in, in, in massive arenas. Um, it's not somewhere where I comf I'm comfortable with. I, I prefer playing in um, 
in smaller intimate venues where people are there solely for the music. When it gets big and it's over a couple of thousand people, then there's, a, there's people who maybe don't share the same taste of music as the DJ or, um, or the DJ doesn't share the taste of music of the crowd. And I think in, in, in bigger clubs, generally, it's... Um, in some of the super, super clubs that are concerned, it's, it's about the drug. It's about going out and getting absolutely razzled on Saturday and then... I think generally, ninety percent of the time, on Monday morning, a lot of those, a lot of that music that's played is forgotten. It's over in the back at work or back at college, and that music is forgotten. There's there's a small percentage of that music that that that, that stays and um, and sells, and people remember. So it's one thing that the larger larger venues sometimes can lack. It's gone to the stage was before it's, uh, club culture has gone from being in clubs is now a mainstream like we're playing in places to it like we're playing 45,000 this one we've done 25,000 we've done 200,000 as SJ it's you know, ridiculous it's like this is mainstream now no I don't think it's become too commercial or too mainstream I mean that's what it's all about the other day it's about selling records and making music is about selling records it's people could people would be lying if they didn't want it to become more commercial I mean, what's commercial? When records like the Marlon Van Helden cross over and become number one, I think that's great. I mean, because it, it shows that people do like good music. And that's what it's all about, and that's what I've tried for all my life. It, there's some very creative records that have, have um, taken um, elements of past records and recreated them and um, put effects on them in studios. Um, Look at the way Stardust was so popular. That's that's taken, you know, it's old music um, loops um, reinvented, and that's the same as rap. Rap music is uh, most of the loops are, are from very old records, so it's it, it's just a current trend of, of of the way production is. But I think personally, I think the music at the moment is stronger than ever. Disco is killing house music. It's like every other record's got to play sampling. And at first, yeah, it was great. I mean, obviously, all good music, dark music came from disco in the first place. It's just an extension of. But to resample every old disco hit and to loop it, it's just ludicrous. Yeah, and it's really tiresome. Um, I just sit moving on from that. There's too many talentless people doing the same thing. So they're just regurgitating old tracks. Whereas to be truly successful and to last longest, you have to keep one step ahead of the game. If you're not good at what you do, it's pointless doing it. And it's only, it's only time that sells. So I must be brilliant because I've been here for about 15 years. <laughs> It's very different days. It's a, it's a much more corporate, commercial um, thing in a sense, um, and that's how it is. We can't hold on to the past and, and you know keep riding on that wave of nostalgia. Um, it's enjoying the present time and making the best of what there is out there currently. And I enjoy being the DJs. <laughs> Seem to me, it's, it's my life. It's what I'm about. It's where I thrive. It's where I'm at my best. It's me showing off and being self, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> 